Hello, greetings, and welcome to Dividend Blasters. This is our 34th video, and our topic today is Attention Dividend Investors Invest in Broadcom. There's a really good story to tell about this stock. Uh, as an investment, um, it's a wonderful dividend growth investment, but it's also a wonderful growth investment. It's also uh, a complicated story because it is a key player in a very competitive industry, the semiconductor industry. I'm going to tell you the reason why it is, and uh, I am a, uh, a shareholder, and I couldn't be happier. So let's move on and talk about this wonderful story about Broadcom. First and foremost, a quick disclaimer, I am not your financial advisor. Purpose of this video is for financial information and education. Okay, it, it is not financial advice and it reflects my own opinions, my research, and my experience that I bring to this uh, based on 30 years of investing. Uh, but I urge you to do your own research, do your own due diligence, and consult a licensed professional financial advisor before making key financial investment decisions. All right, let's move on. So, Broadcom, it's an American multinational. It is a designer, developer, manufacturer, and global supplier of a wide range of semiconductors and infrastructure software products. Key product offerings, sir serve data centers, networking, software, broadband, wireless, storage, and industrial markets. As of 2022, they get their revenue from two key business lines. 78% comes from semiconductor-based products. Okay, so that's their sweet spot. Semiconductor or chip-based products, 22% from infrastructure, software, products, and services. They were incorporated in 2018, and they are headquartered in San Jose, California. So let's talk metrics. You, you know, you see that price, you might get a little sticker shock, but I am telling you that this stock is worth every penny. It closed Friday, May 19th at 682.25. All right, and the P.E. ratio is 16.51. If you go to the panel on the left, what I'm doing for comparative purposes, I want you to see what the S&P 500 PE ratio is. It's 18.57. So what does that tell you? That tells you that this is a good buy relative to the market. Why is it? Because its earnings are outstanding. Its earnings can justify that $682 price. Look at the earnings per share, 41.32. Look at the dividend, 18.40. That earnings per share is much more than sufficient to cover that dividend. That dividend yield of 2.7% is impressive for a high tech stock. And let me say something about high tech stocks. A lot of them do not pay dividends. Broadcom does. A lot of these uh, companies that, uh, you know, our high technology, they are focused on continuing to promote and implement innovation in their processes and in their technologies, and they are plowing the profits back in. This company has so much profits, they can do that, and they can afford to pay a dividend. So, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. The market cap is decent. It's almost $285 billion. So it's not a small company. It's a big company. And it's in a very competitive industry. The ratings are outstanding. So, you know, what? Seeking Alpha, the, the, uh, the contributors give it a buy rating. They endorse it as something worth buying. So, Really, if you were looking on a five-point scale, it's right around four, just an eyelash under four. Wall Street gives it a more than buy rating of 4.28. And you can see the breakout in the, uh, among the different categories of strong buy, buy, hold, sell, and strong sell. Nobody is saying to sell or strong sell. They're saying either it's a strong buy or it's mostly a buy. Wall Street is really bullish. Uh, they have 16 out of 28 uh, analysts saying it is a strong buy. 
The quant ratings, a little bit lower. And, and honestly, what you see is the profitability and the momentum are really good. They're A and A plus grades. Uh, they have lower growth and lower valuation. And it's really relative to a couple of competitors that I believe are skewing the ratings uh, that have had really outstanding price appreciation over the last year. And I think that's what's growing it. But I'm going to tell you, uh, many of the competitors do not offer dividends. And that's what makes Broadcom a unique investment. Let's press on. Okay, and I kind of talked about this, but I'm going to go a little deeper. Um, dividend summary, uh, again, it's a 2.7% forward yield. Uh, dollarized annually, you're going to get $18.40 a year per share. Broken out four times each quarter. So that's about four sixty dollars a quarter. Uh, that's pretty decent. Uh, it is a safe dividend. The payout ratio and I alluded to this when I talked about its earnings per share, the payout ratio is under 44%. And we typically don't like to breach a 60% payout ratio. So this is a very safe dividend. What is truly, truly impressive is the five-year dividend growth rate or the CAGR, the compounded annual growth rate of the dividend. It's almost 26%. And as I've mentioned before, when we look at a potential uh, rule of thumb uh, or hurdle, um, when you're looking at the dividend yield and the CAGR, you typically like to see something more than 10%. Well, <laughs> you know, you're looking at 28.42% here between the 2.7% dividend yield and the five-year CAGR. It's simply outstanding. And so far, Broadcom has sustained. They have sustained a growing dividend for 11 consecutive years. That is Truly impressive. Let's move on. So here, and what I'm going to do over the next several slides, and I'm getting a lot of my information from Seeking Alpha. It's a wonderful resource that I subscribe to. It's one of a number uh, that I subscribe to. Um, let's look at how they compare to their competitors. Um, we're going to look first at dividend yield. We're going to look at a bunch of metrics. We're going to look at dividend yield first. Let me draw your attention first to the forward dividend yield. As I mentioned, it's 2.7%. So relative to their competitors in their sector, uh, Seeking Alpha says they're a B plus, 2.7%. Uh, the sector median, 1.58%. And I'm going to underpin this with the comment that many of their competitors offer low yields or no yields. And that is worth drawing your attention to. Yield on cost, outstanding. Look at this. Five-year yield on cost, an A-plus, 7.37%. Uh, those earnings are outstanding relative to their cost. And I got to tell you, the dividend has been increasing relative to that. And that's why the yield on cost is so nice compared to their sector competitors. Free cash flow. Um, you know, trending 12 months is more than the sector competitors, almost 6%. Uh, free cash flow uh, for year one, uh, more than 6%. Operating earnings yield, more than 7.6%. It's They're killing their competition. Let's move on. You know, and this is really one of the favorite ratios that I have as a dividend growth investor. I like to see how they are growing the dividend. And I'm going to go right to the five-year CAGR, okay? A plus 25.72%. I mentioned this a couple slides ago. Uh, sector median, the CAGR is on average a little under eight, more than three times their competitors. It's outstanding, you know? And you, you go down here. Okay, look at the return on net tangible assets, trending 12 months, almost 103%. Now, you know, the sector median is good. It's 26%, but Broadcom is killing it, absolutely killing it. Let's move on. And you know what? I'm not going to go through each one of these. You can freeze it, and you can look at it and do the comparison. But I'm sharing the information with you, and I'm drawing your attention to what I believe are the important metrics to look at. 
Profile. Okay, so who are the competitors? Well, Seeking Alpha says it's Advanced Micro de uh, Devices, AMD, Texas Instruments, TXN, Intel. Uh, <laughs> I've had some issues with Intel, and you know they slashed their dividend by more than two-thirds uh, about three months ago. Taiwan Semiconductors, it's a wonderful company, but they have their own issues, and I'll get into that. Qualcomm, it's a good company. And you know what? They did not have NVIDIA here. I added them because I don't think you can talk about their competitors without talking about NVIDIA and also the role that they will play in artificial intelligence in the future and where they are now and where Broadcom is now. Uh, so I added them. So I wanted to sh share those with you. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you what, let's start with market cap. Uh, Broadcom is a big company. Uh, they're smaller than Taiwan Semiconductor, and they are smaller than NVIDIA. Taiwan Semiconductor is about $451 billion. NVIDIA is huge, $773 billion. Now, let me say something about Taiwan Semiconductor. Uh, Warren Buffett is a big fan. Okay. However, he's divested completely from Di Taiwan Semiconductor for geopolitical reasons. Okay. They, um, there is a risk there that may not be able to be mitigated. The People's Republic of China decides to invade Taiwan. Um, you know, there could be a war. I don't know. And I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But the risk is they could actually take over that company. Uh, and Taiwan Semiconductor is very big in semiconductor chips in military uh, equipment and weaponry. Uh, so th there is a risk there, uh, you, you know, and honestly, we can't let that happen. But uh, that's for another video and, and probably for someone else to discuss. Um, so I would probably not invest in them. So that's and, and that is really the reason why. Uh, Warren Buffett divested completely. Now, NVIDIA is very big, and they are very important in the chip industry, and that's why I added him, them here. Um, and they're big. Uh, look, at the, look at the market cap. It's almost three times the size of Broadcom. However, they do not offer a dividend. So that's, that's one of the knocks against them, and this channel is for – it's for all investors, but our focus is on dividend growth investments. So you can see the enterprise value. They closely reflect the market cap. Uh, you can see the number of employees in these companies. Uh, Broadcom is approximately the same size of all of these, maybe with the exception of Intel, Taiwan, and Taiwan Semiconductor, and Qualcomm. Um, you know what? Honestly, I would not invest in Intel. Uh, I used to be an investor. I actually still have a handful of shares, uh, but I did get out. Uh, I have eight shares left, and I can't get rid of them because eight of them are certificated shares, and I do not know where the certificates are. Otherwise, I would have liquidated everything. I, I had over uh, several hundred shares, oh, but I got out. Um, you know, it's and, and you know what? Honestly, I'm going to say one more thing about Intel. It's a teachable lesson here, and, and that lesson is. When you're investing in companies, you're investing in high tech companies, you really got to watch them. You got to ask the questions, are they continually improving? Are they continually innovating? How are they doing relative to their competition? Intel sat still for years, and that's why they are where they are. 20, 25 years ago, they were undoubtedly, no question, the market leader. They are not anymore. So that's why you have other companies in this sector that are leading, Broadcom being one of them. Uh, so, okay, you can see the number of employees, number of analysts. You can see the number of analysts covering it. That's fine. I'm not going to get into that. You can look at that. What I'm going to share with you here is total return um, for 10 years of these companies. Now, total return is price return plus dividends. Now, what you see really is NVIDIA by far has the greatest total return. Why do they? Well, it's because their price has taken off over the last 10 years, really over the last two years, okay? Uh, they have no dividend, none, none to speak of. So it's really price appreciation. 
The company is on fire, but they offer no dividend. So who's next? Well, uh, Advanced Micro Devices and Broadcom. Texas Instruments is not bad, okay? Taiwan Semiconductor, it's good. It's a great company, but they have their own issues. Intel, I'm not even going to mention them. So that's what I wanted to share with you. And and you know what? I am I am basically of the position that Broadcom for me is a great investment. I'm looking at advanced micro devices, but right now I am firmly a Broadcom investor. Let's go on. Here's just a quick quick comparison of trading prices and volumes of these different companies by far. Uh, Broadcom uh, has the highest price, uh, followed by NVIDIA, which is a little less than half. Um, okay, I'm just sharing that with you because price doesn't tell everything. Uh, there are other things you need to look at. You need to look at earnings. You also need to look at cash flow, and you need to look at dividends. Let's keep going. So... Here's a comparison of the peers, and it's basically looking at total return and dividends. So let's take a look at total return. Okay, so you'll see here that the total return is NVIDIA has almost a 9,000% return uh, over the last 10 years, whereas uh, Broadcom has a little under 25%. But it's really price. It's price appreciation. That's what it is. And you know what? You can actually go ahead and do a further look. Um, advanced micro devices is right about the same, 25%, per, 100%. Uh, look at the dividends. Okay. So if you look at the dividends, you look at the dividends. Uh, advanced micro devices, no dividend. Texas Instruments, well, let's take a look at their dividend. Uh, their forward dividend is about 2.92%. It compares just about fine with Broadcom. Intel's is less, and I say no to Intel. Taiwan Semiconductors is less, and I say no for different reasons. Qualcomm, their dividend yield is fine. Okay, NVIDIA, they have a tiny, tiny, minuscule, almost non-existent dividend yield. I almost would say they don't have one. Uh, but they have a tiny one, okay? So let's move down. Payout ratio for Broadcom, 43%. I already mentioned that. Uh, let's see, Taiwan Semiconductor is very small, okay? Qualcomm is a decent, it's a decent payout ratio. NVIDIA's is tiny, okay? But I think we need to go a little further down. Let's look at the Kager. The Kager is a big part of the story. Five-year CAGR for uh, Broadcom, almost 26%. Texas Instruments is decent, a little under 16, but less than Broadcom. Intel, no. Taiwan Semiconductor, it's a decent CAGR, but I'm going to say no. Qualcomm, not a bad CAGR. NVIDIA, no. Consecutive years of dividend growth, I like that 11 years for Broadcom. Texas Instruments, 17 years. That's pretty good. Qualcomm, 19 years. So that's really pretty good. So I would say, you know what? If I am looking at a decent uh, growth investment and a dividend growth investment, I'm looking at Broadcom. I'm also considering, I'm considering Texas Instruments and I'm considering Qualcomm right now. That's where I am with this. Now, if I'm looking at growth investments, I'd be kind of foolish not to even look at NVIDIA just because of that significant astronomic price appreciation. You got to you gotta look at them. You, gotta, you can't just rule them out because they don't pay really much of a dividend. That's my position on this. Let's move on. Dividend grades. So here we're just looking at dividends and Seeking Alpha basically gives a Broadcom a pluses and B pluses. So it really comes out to an A. The safety grade is an A plus. The growth grade is an A plus. Yield is B plus. Dividend consistency, B plus. Uh, Texas Instruments, it's comparable in those areas, uh, as is Qualcomm. None of the other ones are, uh, I would say, comparable uh, on the dividend front. Let's move on. 
Okay, valuation. Well, I talked about the P-E ratio earlier. So I think what you'd look at here is the P-E non-gap uh, for one year, okay? Broadcom 16.51. Uh, AMDs is much higher. Texas Instruments is much higher. Okay, 36, almost 23. Intel, forget it. Okay, 71, no. Taiwan Semiconductor, that's a decent. Okay, I would say, you know what? I, I, I would not rule it out for that. I would rule it out for other reasons until we see what happens on the geopolitical front with China. Qualcomm, I say that is something worth looking at, okay? NVIDIA, um, no. To me, this tells me that NVIDIA's price is probably too high relative to their earnings. But maybe there's more metrics here we look at. I would say if you go down here and you look at things like Price to book, price to cash flow, um, those are much higher metrics relative to Broadcom as they are to the others. You can look at them, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe they are overpriced. Let's look at growth. Well, revenue growth year over year, I do like how... Broadcom stacks up against Texas Instruments and Intel and uh, Qualcomm and NVIDIA. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductor has good metrics, but I'm going to set them aside. Uh, AMD, good metrics, but they don't pay a dividend. So, you know, uh, I got to tell you, uh, uh, advanced micro devices, they don't pay a dividend, but you need to look at them because they will likely play a role, as will NVIDIA, as we start to get more mature in artificial intelligence. So um, I would say Intel and uh, TSM, set them aside. Uh, Broadcom for me is top dog, but I'm also looking at, and I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching advanced micro devices. I am kind of looking at NVIDIA and Qualcomm and Texas Instruments and, and, and AMD, but for different reasons. So uh, earnings, uh, let's see. Well, earnings per share, uh, you know, um, Broadcom looks good, 16.72%. Uh, they look really good relative to AMD, Texas Instruments, Intel, TSM. They look good. Uh, let's see, total assets. And, you know, I'm sorry that I moved them over to the, the right. I actually spliced uh, from this slide, but it's really, it's the same, it's the same order. Broadcom, AMD, Texas Instruments, Intel, uh, TSM, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA. Uh, let's see, if you look at, um, well, you look at any, any of the other total assets or leverage free cash flow, uh, they look pretty good. Uh, but I, you know what? Take a look at net income, three-year CAGR. Uh, I think that is a decent metric for Broadcom. Uh, AMD is negative. Uh, Texas Instruments is smaller. Uh, forget Intel. Uh, TSM, it's about half. Qualcomm, about half. NVIDIA, much less. Let's move on. Profitability. Well, let's look at the gross profit margin. You know, they're all pretty good. Okay, they are. Okay, but I got to tell you, Broadcom is the leader here, a little under 75%. The rest of them are trailing. Let's look at net income margin. Again, 37%. AMD, under 2%. Now, Texas Instruments is 42%. That's pretty good. Maybe that is something you take a closer look at. Intel, no. Taiwan Semiconductor, that's pretty good, but we're setting them aside. Qualcomm, not bad. NVIDIA, less. Let's see. Return on equity, 55% for Broadcom. 
Uh, Texas Instruments, 56%. Pretty good. Qualcomm, 64 So, you know, there are some instances where these other companies do compare nicely. Uh, but I will go back to the dividend, and uh, it's really quite impressive, especially for a company of that size. You know, when you look at companies bigger, NVIDIA hardly pays a dividend. It's three times the size. So I wanted to mention that. You know what really kind of stands out? Look at metrics like revenue for, per employee, 1.66 million. So that is a company that has a big revenue number and many fewer employees. And that's why that metric stands out. But the only one that comes close is NVIDIA, and it's not that close. It's a little over a million. Let's look at net income per employee. This is where they really begin to pull away, 640000 uh, dollars net income per employee. Uh, AMD, 16000 Texas Instruments, 250000 Intel's negative. <laughs> Taiwan Semiconductor is pretty good, 513000 Qualcomm, 207000 NVIDIA, way, way, way below, 167000 So, to me, Broadcom looks really good there on the profitability front. Risk. Well, you know, here I'm looking at the betas. And remember, these metrics basically speak to price volatility relative to the S&P 500. Uh, so they're a little bit more volatile. Uh, the 24-month beta, last 24 months, uh, the beta is 1.19 for price com. And for uh, the last five years or 60 months, it's 1.12. So it's kind of come up a little bit. Over the last two years, how do they compare? Well, they're all it's kind of in the middle. Uh, I would say that AMD is more price volatile, as is Qualcomm a little bit, and NVIDIA is much more price volatile. Texas Instruments is less volatile. Intel, I would just I would just set them aside. Uh, and TSM, um, they've been more price volatile the last five years, a little bit less price volatile the last two years. So I'd say it's kind of a mixed story, but they're really in the middle and it's it's not I'm not seeing a lot of volatility there. And for some for a, a you know a, a high tech sector it's not bad. Okay. Some income income statement metrics. Well let's take a look. You know re remember the market cap is about one third that of NVIDIA. Um, but look at the revenue, 34 billion. It's more than Nvidia's. Okay, uh, it is less than Taiwan Semiconductor. It's less than Intel. Okay, but it's you can't just look at revenue. You got to look at some of the other things. Look at earnings per share, almost 30 dollars earnings per share. Uh, is anybody even close? Qualcomm is maybe at nine, a little more than nine. Texas Instruments is a little under nine. Nobody else is close. So the earnings. Um, you know, they come out way, way, way ahead. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to look at? Uh, uh, <laughs> gross profit. Well, I would say the net income is, is a decent metric to look at. I like the earnings uh, metric, but net income is a little under $13 billion, way above AMD. Okay, more than Texas Instruments. Intel's negative. Uh, TSM has... A uh, really nice net income figure of 33 billion. Qualcomm's is less, 10 and a half. Nvidia's as big as they are, 4.37 billion. So they are about three times the size. Uh, interestingly, Broadcom's market cap is about one third, yet its net income is about three times the size of Nvidia. Go figure that out. All right. You know, folks, that's it. That's all I have. So. Uh, what I, my intent here was not to just share with you why I think Broadcom is a great investment, but it's also to give you some background on the market and what's out there and why it's not a straightforward analysis. It's a little bit more complex and you got to do a little digging, which is what I did. And I hope you found this informative. So I would ask that you please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And please go ahead and share it with a friend or a family member. And until our next video, have a wonderful day and God bless.